Here is my take on 80s home computer magic. As a kid I was blown away by pixel graphics and games like Space Invaders, an alien world and technology to be explored. That's why in this video series I present my own dream home computer, the Minimal 64. To me it's the most computer from the least logic or the shortest way from TTL to Space Invaders. Ever played Space Invaders on breadboards? Today let's see the Minimal 64 prototype in action. And let me be even nerdier and use my vintage IBM Monochrome CRT from 1987. I think it's the perfect match for my retro CPU. Or am I overdoing this monochrome thing a bit? That sort of brings me to the point of today's video, where we'll do a short guided tour around the Minimal 64 home computer. All the stuff I'm about to show, just taken by itself, is going to look very standardish to the point that some people get bored and want color and sound and I perfectly understand that. We expect that from any given computer today. So the only way of getting excited about this minimal 64 stuff is to always remind ourselves just how simple and maxed out this tiny hardware is. It's a handful of TTL chips trying to fool you into believing it's just another computer. So let's go programming it, natively, in Python, sort of. We'll hop over to the Minimal 64 emulator for that, since it is much easier to capture on video. You'll find a link to my GitHub page in the video description, so you can download and play around with the Minimal 64 emulator too. I have the emulator here on my desktop. It's just a single file. But we see it needs an image of the flash SSD drive. Uh, let me just copy that. Now we should be okay. First things to note are the options the emulator gives us. Hitting F1 toggles this HUD, so we can always get back here. F11 is the reset button and F12 quits and saves the current SSD state. Easy enough. Let's have a look at all the files on the SSD. We are greeted by a DOS-like environment here and already forget about the TTL thing, right? We can run any executable by typing its name, so it's really easy to add your own commands to the system. I'll type invaders and hit enter. Okay, now that looks familiar. Uh, remember the reset key? Okay, F11 brings us back to the splash screen. It says we have an onboard manual available, so let's type show manual and have a closer look. First we find an explanation of all the available DOS commands. Next comes a detailed memory map. We see that we have 44 kilobytes of contiguous RAM available. At hex B000 we have the operating system and from C000 onwards we have 16K of video RAM. Okay, next comes information about the text editor edit. We are introduced to the Python-like language min we are going to use in a minute. Chapter 5 explains the native assembler, but we won't use that today. Chapter 6 lists the CPU's instruction set with all its details. And finally we arrive at the hardware specification. Let's try warm start the operating system by typing run b000. Alright, let's load edit and write a simple hello world program. Now I quit the editor by hitting Ctrl Q and simply type in min, which will launch the interpreter. There is no need to save our program since we just want to play around a bit. We can warm start our editor by typing run zero or just run and there's our program again. Let's add a while loop just because we can. Uh, note that scrolling does slow down the system since it involves moving the entire 16K of video RAM. Let's try an example program and load rects.min into our editor by hitting Ctrl L and typing in the file name. Hmm, the first line includes some sort of standard library. Then we clear the screen and draw random rectangles. Let's try that. Okay, that's looking good. 
let us have a quick look at what std.min actually is. Ah, it's just min code, predefining a bunch of useful functions. Now let's run the example blocks.min. You've guessed it. It's a Tetris clone written in and interpreted by min on 61 TTL chips. And it's actually quite playable. Here's the code. Min has got some syntax tricks up its sleeve to facilitate running very close to the hardware. Let me show you how easy it is to directly write into video RAM. You might have noticed that Min, unlike Python, is an explicitly and statically typed language, more like C. So we declare a variable by specifying its type. If we print out its value, we'll get minus one in decimal, as it should be in two's complement. We can also show the address at which min has stored our value in memory by using the ampers and operator. But I'd prefer a hex printout now. We can write one in a minute. Let's define a function hex print accepting a two byte integer parameter. Let's print out 0x and then print out four hex digits in a while loop. We always access the most significant nibble. If its value is less than 10, we make it a digit, otherwise it must be a letter. Now let's print that, shift up the next nibble and repeat. Okay, I think this is it. So our variable's address happened to be hex AA00. Usually min, like Python, takes care of where to store our data. But we can explicitly claim responsibility over that by using the add operator. Now we force min to store our variable at the beginning of video RAM and to not worry about memory allocation. And there we see some pixels light up. See how easy it is to get access to the Minimal 64's memory? So why not play around some more with the Minimal 64 yourself? As always, it's free and just a download away. You'll find the link down in the description. Let me know in the comments how you experience your first steps on this computer and please consider liking and subscribing if you think I've earned it. Until next time then, take care, bye.